Hello, and welcome to Game 8 of US vs UK 2014. The US currently leads 4-3 in the best of 9 series, and needs just one more victory to win the series. Tonight, John O'Loughlin of the US is playing David Eldar of the UK. The game has just started, so let's join the action. It's John to go first. He has a tricky rack, certainly no bingos here. We have the benefit of our Railbird's observations on the right of the screen. Skull has been suggested, that would certainly sort the rack out. But it doesn't place the K on a double letter square. When you've got two S's, the second S is of little value, unless it's the only other constant on your rack. So certainly, John can afford to burn the S, burn one of his S's rather. Yep, skull for 20, that's fine. David has a horrendous rack, no vowels at all. He does now have a U to play through, but that's that's no good without any vowels, so he may be tempted to change here. Now, the placement of skull has been questioned because it is placing the S in the triple word square column, column 8 for eight letter bingos ending in S, whereas if it had been placed at H4, that danger wouldn't have existed. David's changed six of his tiles, and we're back to John, who is swamped with vowels. And he's drawn another S. So, what to do here? He could certainly play loose, or oleos. But that's keeping two O's. Now it may be better to change all four O's and keep E double S. Well, he's changed three tiles, so he's kept E O double S. That's fine. Now David has a better rack. He's got a good balance of vowels and consonants. And he's got the X for score. So he could play Voxel in columns 11 or 12. Keeping IT. ITY rather. Not a great leave. It's been pointed out that David has got seven of the nine tiles in convexity. And people, our railbirds are also looking at the extensions of skull which reach the triple word square at H15. I think sculling and scullers are being mentioned. But with this rack, Voxel is the best that I've seen. I'm wondering if there's a way of playing off the Y with the X. Vexil is being suggested as an alternative to Voxel. Probably not very much between those choices. Well, the last time David played, he was out of the traps apace with two bingos in about 30 seconds. He's had much more grittier racks to deal with this time around. Yeah, it is the, the rack leave ITY after Voxel, which is not great. Oxy is good as a three letter word. Can't see anywhere fabulous for that. Vitex is good. That's another five. Well, that's a five letter play on. David's rack. Again, nowhere great to play it. So I haven't seen anything better than Voxel, but... Well, Oxy could be playable in row I, making low. That does place the X on the double letter square. And V-I-T-E is quite a good rack leave. 
and it's not giving anything away to John. So that certainly is worth considering. Well, David has spent a while on this rack, but it's a tricky, tricky rack to find the best play. K does take a Y underneath it, but I can't see any good plays which use that, even ones which leave the X on his rack. If he retains the X, I think he would certainly be looking to play off the V and the Y. Levity is being suggested, keeping X, Y. Well, that's a possibility. Doesn't seem to give much away. Sorry, OX is the yeah, OX is the leave from Levity, as pointed out by Quizzical, and that's quite a good rack leave. Not bingo y but should be able to score with it. And well, it's being pointed out that levity in column 12 would place the I to the right of a double word square where the X could go the next go. Well, David's used up nearly a quarter of his time and still not played a single move. There goes Voxel, 30 points. I think that probably was just the best. Now, out seas for John. Is there somewhere to play it? Well, yes, Skulls. So column 13, out seas and Skulls. Fantastic for John. But are there any alternative bingos? Well, even if there were, I think out seas is going to score the most. I think it would score more even than a play in column 8. So Outseas goes down. John now has a 66-point lead. David has picked up the Z, which is a good scoring tile. But he'd like to score well with it and leave a good rack lead. But I don't think that's going to be possible with a B and a Y on his rack, trammeling his bingo hopes. Well, Boozy's playable in row B. That plays off the B, O, Z and Y, leaving A, I, T. So that's not bad. For about 38 points. What else is playable? Well, Zozo and Ox is available. I would have thought Boozy playing off the B and the Y is certainly better than that. A few suggestions coming through from... The Railbirds, Bazoo and Zoa and Vat. Ah, well, Zoa and Vat, yeah, very nice. But keeping the B and the Y. I think Boozy's pretty good because not only does it score well and and get rid of the non bingo -y tiles, it also opens up two triple word square lanes, row A and column 15. So if John takes one of them, David has first dibs at the other. David's now used nearly seven minutes of his time. Zobu, well, I didn't see that. 43 points. He's played off the Z and the B, so he has retained the Y, but he hasn't provided his opponent with the access to the triple word squares that Boozy would have done. Now, this is not a great rack, but John did draw seven random tiles, so this is just the sort of rubbish you can expect. He'll certainly be looking to play off one or both eyes, and probably the U as well. But if he plays Quaff or Fico, he's keeping three vowels, which isn't good. So this is a tricky rack, and John's lead is only... 23 points, despite bingoing. And David's play of Zobu means that John doesn't have any really good scoring places available. Well, he could play Coke, but that's keeping two I's, a U and an F. 
not good. And he doesn't have an A or a D for going in front of Zo. QF. Well, QFs is being pointed out by Magic Hour. That's quite a nice play in column eight. It doesn't score well, but it's... Well, it's getting rid of the U, one of the I's, and the F. All of which are good things to do. Well. John's gone for score with Coke. Wow, that was quick. I didn't even see what he had on his rack. 80 points for literary. Fantastic. And David... And the United Kingdom now take a 27-point lead. And John's got a horrendous rack. Four eyes and a U. He took a, a risk with playing Coke, going for score, keeping a bad rack, hoping to draw well. He's drawn badly. He's now got a nightmare rack. But he's able to play through it. 32 points for Fiery. That's a good spot. But does David have another bingo? This looks pretty good. Through an N, he would have Entoderm. Anything through the floaters in literary. I'm looking at the right of the screen for inspiration from our railbirds. No bingos are being suggested. This looks very close to a bingo. Tremored is being pointed out. Wow, fantastic. That is playable in row L. Will David say it? If he does, it's going to give the UK a good lead in this game. John is now five points ahead, but David's on turn, and he's, he's got a bingo on his rack. But it's a tricky one, Tremored. Does he know it? Or does he have the requisite degree of confidence in it? No other bingos have been suggested, so that might well be the only one available. But if he doesn't see it, what could he play? Well, he should have a range of opportunities which leave a decent rack leave for the following go. He could, for example, play Mo in row O, Mo and Fe. Only 20 points. A lot worse than Tremored. But the rack leave of DERT is pretty good. But will he spot Tremored? Eleven minutes left for David. Fifty-three tiles left in the bag. So we're about halfway through. And I'm looking also in column 12 in case there's a good non-bingo play there. David's got the O for making zoos and the E for making that. But I, I can't see anything. And I note for future reference that an A could go between Cox and E. Well, demoters being suggested, but I don't think that is good. Yeah, it's well, the, the railbirds are confirming it's it's not good, and Quizzical is pointing out that there are no sevens. So I think it's tremored or nothing, and David is. Just used up half his time now. It's difficult to look for non-bingo plays when you know when you're when you're hoping that David will play the the bingo that's available. If John wins this game, then the US win the series, win the tournament with a game to spare. If David wins it, it's tied at 4-4, and the final game decides the result, and that will be between Jeff Thevano and David Eldar. 
and David has spent a long time on this move. And he's he's not gone for Tremor. He either hasn't seen it or didn't feel confident about it. He's played Dome for 36 points, which is a good score and a good rack leave. We're back with John, who is still working his way through through a grim series of vowel-heavy racks with duplicate tiles. He's got a 31-point deficit. I don't think David's miss of Tremord is a bad miss because he's got a good rack leave and he scored well with with Dome and Tremord would did not did not hit a double or triple word square. But I th still think Tremord is likely to have been a better play. So what to do with this rack? Fujio onto an O, there is no O. Well, he's changed, he's changed all seven, and David has a fabulous rack, he has eight Brin. Does that play anywhere? And does he have anything onto the D of Dome? This looks really bingo-y. Well... Does Apron really not play anywhere? This looks like a pretty open board. But I can't see anywhere for Apron. I don't. Th well, is there an anagram of Apron? So. Anything onto the D of Dome? Well, can't see anything. And then there's the E and R of Literary as floaters, which both duplicate tiles on his rack. So having missed a bingo, which was difficult to see, he's now got a bingo on his rack, but nowhere to play it. Fiery takes an S after it. I think it's a slang word or an Australian word for a fireman. And the Y of literary is also available as a floater, but would require the require tiles going underneath the F and the I. So I don't think there is a bingo here, which is a shame. For David, he must have felt pretty good when he saw this rack. Okay, bye for 16. He's played off just one tile and he's kept retain, which is probably the best six-letter set. Six-letter set. Now, John has drawn the first blank. He has played his way through some truly horrendous racks. He's got about a 50-point deficit. But he now has the blank and a good scoring tile in the J, so he can see daylight. I'm not sure if he has a bingo with this rack. He's close to Jarhead. He doesn't have that. Hedra for 50. That's pretty good. And he's retaining the blank. Now, wow, retained. That was quick. 77 points. David now has a 70-point lead. We're back with John. He's picked up the cue that I think he threw back earlier. So he'll... With the blank, he's going to be anxious to get rid of that cue as possible because that is hampering his bingo prospects. The F and the M also aren't good, but the priority is going to be to get rid of the cue. Can he do that? Yes, he can play cat in row J, 32 points. And looking at the remaining tiles, there's only one S left plus a blank, so column 15 is looking pretty good for pluralizing fiery with John's blank. And that is quite good, given that David played retained. Wow, very quick play. It looked close to a bingo. Now, Moffette is good. Does that play anywhere? I think Moffette is good. Well, it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. It, I thought it played in row B, but RO certainly isn't good. So, 
I don't think there is a playable bingo here. But this shouldn't be too hard to sort out. John's got scoring tiles in the F and the M. So I think the priority is to play off the F and one of the T's. Fumetto is also on John's rack, but unplayable. So both players have had bingos on their racks, which don't go down. Now, it's been pointed out that Moff Et with two Fs plays. Where does that play? It must play through an F or an E. Well, it doesn't play through an F. Where's the available E? Well, I need help on this. I can't see where Moffat, Moffat plays, being suggested by Evil Budgie. Okay, well, we'll wait and see if we get any comment on that. I2 across. Oh, well, of course. Look at that. The E of Coke and ST. Wow. So John does have a playable bingo here. Fantastic spot by Evil Budgie. I'm not 100% sure of Mafet with two Fs and two Ts, but I think it would have been pointed out by a railbird if it wasn't good. But great spot by Evil Budgie. It is opening up column one, but that's uh, no reason not to play it. 11 minutes left on John's clock. And it's being suggested that both Moffat and ST are Collins only words, so not in the American dictionary. And the American players are at a slight disadvantage if they are playing some of their games with the American dictionary and some with the larger Collins dictionary. Now, David's used, used up a lot of time, but even though he missed a bingo, he has now established a 79 point lead. But that is going to be completely eroded if John is able to bingo. David played chain very quickly, so we didn't really have a chance to analyze his rack. Well, he's, John has missed Moffat. We're back with David. I don't think he's got a bingo here. Ah, it's been pointed out that Moffat was not Collins only. It is in the US dictionary, and John would certainly know the Collins only too, so that's certainly a miss, although a very difficult word to see. And it can be difficult when you have words with both a spelling of 1F and 2Fs to be sure of exactly which of those are good. So back with David, he's got a 48 point lead. And he's got good scoring tiles with the P, the W and the Y. And it's been pointed out by Magic Hour that the E on David's rack is the last E. So we can't assume that John is going to bingo because he's gotten the blank. The remaining tiles are not particularly bingo-y. So, where can David score well? And, I, and in particular, I'm looking at the W and the Y because those are the least bingo-y. Way, 30 points, good score. Now... We're back with John. This doesn't look massively bingo-y. There are no vowels on the board to play through apart from the E of Coke. And I don't think there's a 7 on this rack. This must be very frustrating for, for John. He, he's a bingo behind and he's got the blank. When you've got the blank, you tend to think well that you're going to bingo this go or next. And... Well, I don't think he does have a bingo here. And he can see now that that E's been played, that there are no E's available. All the E's have been played. 
and this isn't an open board. So I think we're in for a, a tight end game here. Or a tense end game rather as John is striving to have a playable bingo. Chain's quite a nice play by David in the sense that the C doesn't take a tile in front or after apart from H, so it's obstructing bingos. Row N is still available as a seven letter bingo lane for overlapping the H and D of Hedra. And row D is available for bingos ending in S, as is column 15. But what John needs now is vowels. So he really needs to play off about three consonants to address the vowel consonant balance in his own rack and increase his chances of drawing a vowel. Even though the E's have gone, an A or an I would certainly benefit this rack. And with 23 tiles left, that's, that's, there's still quite a lot of action left in this game. Not many suggestions, if any, from our railbirds as to what John should do with this rack. This is a tricky rack. Well, Magic Hour is suggesting Mott. Where's that? Okay, well, he's gone with Dom for 19. Well, there are plenty of vowels left in this game. Wow, and that's a great pickup by John. He has surely got a bingo here. Talions and Latinos play and plays in row, row D. David's play of Gist has taken out the most valuable bingo lane, column 15. And John's play of Dom actually took out the bingo lane in row N. But he do certainly does have a bingo here, Latinos, Talions, row D. That is going to open up column 1. And it's only going to draw him close to David, not ahead of him. Now, Tonalite's being suggested by Adrastia in... Well, row I, taking advantage of the ST play, but that's also going to open up column one. Anti-cold is being suggested. Ah, well, that's nice. Column five, because that's not opening up column one. Yeah, that's quite a nice play. And toenails being suggested. Ah, oh, well, very nice. Toenail making, this is, this is row M, making Ed, No, and Aim. And Bitonal, I think probably in the same spot. So, a whole bunch of possibilities here for John. He is 89 points behind. So, whatever bingo he plays is not going to put him into the lead. But it is going to bring him to within about 10 or 20 points of David. And there's still a blank out there. So and although the remaining tiles are unbingoy, there are bingos amongst them. Now, with some aid, I suspect, from some software, it has been pointed out by Quizzical that column 15, gist, can be pre-extended to nostalgist. That would be pretty cool. And a tonalist is, well, it's being suggested not for column 15, but maybe somewhere elsewhere. Okay, I think Mr. Brain is joining in a conversation rather than pointing out a playable bingo. Toenail for 80, great spot by John. He is now nine points behind David, but David has drawn the last blank, but he's got no vowels. There's plenty of vowels left, about half the tiles left are vowels, but he doesn't have any of them. So he'll be looking to... Well, he's going to want to keep scoring. He could change with nine tiles left, but when you've got a, a such a slender lead, I think you're going to want to keep scoring. Now, I wonder about, about row B, it may be possible to play a selfish play there. And what I mean by that is... 
a play which takes a tile on the end which only you have got. So for example, any four letter play through the double O, stopping one square short of column 15, would allow a play using the blank as an S. Well, David's gone for the for the score. Dawn, 15 points. That's a pretty good pickup for John. Good vowel consonant balance, no duplicates. He's only 24 points behind. Six tiles in the bag. But we know that David has got the blank. Now, John should be able to go into the lead with this rack. I'm looking in column 15 to see if he can play through the N of Duan. Well, he could play something like In Go, but I think he would be looking to score a bit more than that. He's got the UN prefix. Can't see anything being suggested by the railbirds. And this is a tricky situation when you're 20 points behind, because you may be able to win without a bingo. So do you keep the board open to maximise your scoring opportunities, or close the board down to restrict your opponent's scoring opportunities? Vug is playable in row L, which gets rid of the problem tiles. And from John's perspective, there are only four vowels left out of 13 tiles. So he's not going to be worried about a vowel heavy rack leave. Well, John's taking his time over this rack, but understandably so, because very tricky situation. So Vug, 22 points. That would take him to 392. But a play of Ingo in column 15 is going to keep the V and the U on the rack. Now the V is okay at this stage of the game because it's a good scoring tile, but the V and the U are never good together. Vang, 26, pretty good. So we're back with David. He does have a vowel, only one. It is a U. Uh, Quizzicals pointed out that Ungain was playable last go by John in column 15. But we're with David here. Does he have anything? There is still row I for bingos ending in an E. And there are only two tiles in the bag. He's played Unplug and he's played his blank. He's for 27 points. He now has just a 25-point lead. He's trying to outrun John. Will he do it? We can all... Oh, well, look, we can see what David has got on his rack. He's got the tiles at the bottom of your screen. A-D-R-W. If there are two spots to play, to play those tiles, he could be home and dry, but I'm, I'm not seeing anywhere for them. But the W is a good scoring tile to have. I can't see any suggestions from the opponents for where David can go out with draw. But we're with John at the moment. He's got only one and a half minutes left. And he is 25 points behind. If he can't see an out for David, then he can plan a two move out for himself, but he's only got one scoring tile in the P. Power at K3 is being suggested. That's quite nice. Pat, Ono and Aged. It's not going to give him an out in two, but it's going to score well. And well, and David may be limited in terms of what he can score. He's only got one vowel, he's only got one scoring tile. But 
I think David will be able to go out in two if he can't go out in one. Yeah, Quizzical is saying can't see an out for David. John is now really short on time. He's got just 30 seconds left. Poa seems to be the only suggestion coming from the Railbirds. What's that going to score? 28 points. 4-2-4, four four, that would give John a three-point lead. But he, but John would then have a rack of I-I-N-U. What's he going to score with that? Well, he's gone for 13 points for Oi. Has he seen an out for himself with A-I-N-P-U? We'll see. But we're back with... Uh, John's only got eight seconds on his clock. Where wow, great play by David, 16 points. He's now got a 28-point lead. John has gone overtime. John has gone overtime. He loses 10 points and will forfeit the game if he doesn't finish all his moves before he goes one minute overtime. So I think John has lost this game. David's got just a D left. Does he have two spots for that? He can play Ed in row G. Where else is there for the D? Hmm. Is there a second spot for the D? Well, Magigar is saying that if John can block Ed, then David could be stuck with the D, in which case John could probably play out and win. Wow. That would have been astonishing. But there was no time for John to think that through and, and play out. He was just ran out of time. He's going to realise that now. Because I think Ed is the only place for David's D. Nail-biting stuff indeed. Yeah, that was the only place for it. That probably means John could have won if he'd simply blocked that and then played out each of his tiles, but he needed a little bit of time to do that, probably a couple of minutes, and he didn't have a couple of minutes. So fantastic win for David. Final score, 419 to John, 442 to David Eldar. A winning margin of just 23 points, and that ties the series four games apiece. The final game between Jeff Thevano and David Eldar coming up tomorrow. Now, let's see what these players missed. We know they missed a bingo each. What else did they miss? This was the opening rack. And Skull looks like it was the best play. Although probably Alks, I think, would be better. LS, probably a better rack lead than OS. But not much between them. I think, that, as was pointed out, that H4 would have been a better placement for Skull than H8. Horrible rack here for David. He changed. And I think changing is clearly best. Very grim rack for John. And I think he changed here, didn't he? Keeping EO double S. And again, that looks best. Now, the change is stopped. Voxel was played, and that looks best. John bingos without C's, no other bingos. And this was the Zoa play for 49, but retaining the B and the Y. Bazoo for 44. And then we come to David's play of Zobu for 43, which has a lot of merit because it doesn't open up anything for, for John. And now this is where John started to have a grim rack, which got grimmer. He played Coke for 30, so going for score, hoping to draw well. That didn't happen. Now we're back with David, and he has Retiary on his rack. But he played. This was where he played incredibly quickly and got Literary down, and that was the only playable bingo, so great spot by David. This is John's awful 4i and U rack. And he played Fiery for 32, and that's certainly better than changing double I U. Although a bad rack leave is 
better than scoring zero and changing. So this is where Tremored was playable. It was the only playable bingo. But Remedy at 07... Ah, well, Remedy for 44 points was available. What David did here was play Dome for 36, keeping ERT, and that's a pretty good three-tile Rackley. So of the non-bingo plays, I think Dome is amongst the best. John's poor racks continued. What did he do here? He changed. Okay. And he could have got 28 for if, keeping G double I M U. Well, I think probably analysis would be needed to identify if changing was the right thing to do here, but change he did. Now, this is where David had 8 Bryn, nowhere to play it. And there were no playable bingos. And what he did was play off just the B, keeping retain a fantastic six-letter set. And he got 16 points for that. He could have got 20 more points for Beanie. But a significantly worse rack leave. So I think by probably a good or equivalent play to Beanie. Now, John's luck changed as a result of that change of tiles. He's drawn the blank. He's got the J for score. And he plays Hedra for 50. So that was a good, good spot. David has retained and played it, and that was the highest scoring bingo, although there were alternatives. John has the Q, he's able to get rid of it with Cat, and that looks best. And this is where David played Chain quite quickly. And, well, he could have played Can A for 51, keeping double I. And... Well, I'm not a fan of keeping duplicate tiles, so B2, can A. Well, can A may have been better than chain, difficult to say. I note, though, that there is only one E in addition to the E on his rack, so EI is a better rack leave than II, or better than it ordinarily would be. Now, this was the missed bingo for John. It shows up twice, but that's just the different placements of the blank. It's the same play, Moffett at I1. And instead he played Fett for 31, which is fine, but not as good as Moffett. Back with David, and he has some good scoring tiles here. He plays off the final E, a play of way. Yeah, that looks fine. John has the blank, but is short of vowels. And what does he do here? He plays Dom for 19. Well, I think some of those... Keeping LNT blank, that's not great. I think Yold for 31 is certainly a better play. Now we're back with David. He doesn't have a great rack. He plays just for 30. He's racing for the line. He's got a lead of about 60 points. He knows there's two blanks out there and he's just going for score which is fine and taking out a good bingo lane for his opponent who would have been able to use it i think yeah latinos so this is john's rack he does now have a bingo and he played the highest scoring one with toenail so a good spot david has the other blank but no vowels at all and plays doon to maximize his chances of drawing a blank and here we have John's rack, and it's quite a good one as we're entering the end game. It's balanced, no duplicates, and a scoring tile in the V, but he's 24 points behind. So Vane at L1. Yeah, that would have been pretty good, 28 points. Instead, he played Vang for two fewer points and keeping three vowels. Well, there weren't many vowels left, so it's. Difficult to be sure of what's best here, but Vang was amongst the best moves. Back with David. He does have one vowel now. And, well, this is where he played his blank, isn't it? Unplug for 27. Yeah, and you can see that the alternatives there are all, all pretty grim. So he's, David is racing for the line. But what it did mean... Well, no, at this point, after unplug, David has draw, and we're back with John's rack, so 
Let's consider the options here. Power was the only option that was being pointed out at K3, 28 points. And I think that looks best. I can't see any outs in two, although there may be something fancy hidden away there. Okay, he doesn't play power. He played played Oi for 13. Okay, I don't fully understand the logic of that, but it was a tricky a tricky board to consider the option, so maybe power wasn't spotted. This is where David played where, leaving himself with a D, which he could have been stuck with. That's the second choice down there. He could have played waged at J5, keeping DR. Wow. This is just a, a really complex end game, and to analyze this, you either need uh, software, which is, isn't available to the players in the game, or you need time, which was also in short supply in the game. So David did play where, and at this point, we think, or I think, and I think it was suggested by the Railbirds, that since David could only go out in one spot, if John blocks that spot, then he has, can basically score five times and get four points off, off John. So in five plays, could he score 25 points? Probably, yes. So I think this was a winnable game for John. I don't think the program, the ISC suggestions here, take account of how to maximise an end game when a player can be stuck with a tile, so we're not being shown those suggestions. Unpaged is, unpaged is being suggested in column 5, and that doesn't block ED. And finally... Okay, well, I think... Yeah, finally, Ed was the only play, so I think that was a winnable game for John. So a hugely exciting game, well played by both players. Both players did miss bingos, but that does happen at the highest level. And as you saw in this game, Moffett was missed and Tremord was was missed. But very exciting game, and it leaves the series balanced at four games apiece. One remaining game, which is going to happen tomorrow between Jeff Thevenot and David Eldar. The winner of that uh, wins for, for their team. So that's very exciting. I hope you can join me for that, and I hope you've enjoyed tonight's game.